This is the recipe in my sketchy handwriting, in case you want to vaguely have a recipe to, to look at. I guess the first thing, I'll show you the ingredients, right? right. So these are the ingredients here. We've got soybean paste, so we're going to make like basically a, a soup broth over here with that. We've got our Korean chili powder. We've got our ginger, our garlic, minced garlic paste. The ever so lovely smelling fish sauce. Oh boy. Yeah, but it, it, it's integral. I know it's disgusting, but it's so integral. Uh, you can use something else though if you'd rather make it uh, vegetarian or vegan. Uh, sesame oil and some sesame seeds. This has a different variety. It has some salt in there too. Um, this is used for like obviously seasoning onigiri, but it's really good in the kimchi. And I like to add chili flakes because we like ours a little bit spicier. And something fancy we got, but I think I'm gonna add, we'll kind of add it to taste. Um, I got hot pepper paste um, from the grocery store and maybe we'll add some of that to make it a little bit hotter. So first, we're going to start with making the broth. So you don't want a heck of a lot of this. I'd probably put like two cups of water in. And we got a bean paste. You can use, what's it called? Um, miso paste too, but this is like the Korean soybean paste, which I think is probably a little bit more authentic. So I usually put about two spoonfuls and um, dissolve it completely in the water until it's like a soup broth. We'll let that cook and we're gonna make our uh, sauce. We'll start with the chili flakes. We do like it spicier so you can like make it a little bit less if you don't like it spicy. Maybe I will do one third of a cup. Here we go. It's not even that spicy, really, eh? No. The green paste or the flakes. And we got that at our local Asian grocery store, Din Din here. Din Din has basically all the ingredients that we have here. It's good to support local things. Yeah. Um, next, we need three tablespoons of fish oil. Our lovely burnt spoon. Stinky, stinky fish oil. It's so integral though, much like when you make like um, tom yum soup and stuff like that. You need fish oil on its own though, it's disgusting. Agreed. Ooh, it stinks real bad. Now our garlic jar is a bit too small, so. <laughs> Sorry, it's one teaspoon of ginger, so I can do that first. And then you can kind of do everything just to like, if you like one ingredient more, you can add more. This is like key. So you need three tablespoons. I don't have a tablespoon that fits in my jar, so I'm just gonna do like heaping teaspoons. Round it up. <laughs> <laughs> Can't go wrong with garlic. Yeah. And normally I put onion in too. We didn't cut up any onion. Onion. Should we put onion? And over here, I'm gonna keep stirring the, the dashi to make sure. Um, the paste is all absorbed like a soup. Let's add some chili flakes. I'm not even gonna measure it, I'm just gonna put some chili flakes in. Uh. Again, you can kind of do it to your own taste. Our recipe, the one I've been working off of, doesn't actually include sesame oil, but I just love the flavor. So I'm going to put a tablespoon of sesame oil in to give some awesome flavor. And how much of uh, this do you want to add? I guess it depends what it smells like. We haven't tried this yet, so maybe I'll get you to try it, see what it tastes like. Because when it comes to spice, I'm okay with spice, okay? But um, when it comes to Korean spice, yeah, I can't Korean spice. I went to Korea and everything was spicy. Sounds delightful. And we have Korean noodles are so spicy and ridiculous that I cannot handle it. See what it tastes like. It's not really spicy. No? No. Will it add flavor? You think it'll be good? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so maybe we'll throw a couple teaspoons of that in as well. Yeah. Now what? Uh, we're gonna cut some stuff. You, cut you, sucker! You always take the, the cutting uh, job because what happens when I cut stuff? Cut stuff. 
Because I always cut, like, get my fingernails. I cut my fingernails off. I don't know how or why. That but... saves time so you don't have to use the clippers. Um. Cut it. Yeah. <laughs> I think normally I, uh take off a leaf at a time, rather than just start cutting the whole head. Yeah. Eh, why not? Let's mix it up. Let's try something a little different. No? So the reason why we start with cutting the cabbage is because you have to soak, soak it. it for however many hours, but it's saltier the longer you soak it, and we're both salt addicts. We so like salt. Um, we cut it nice and early so we can soak it for a good maybe three hours in salt water brine and, and get that tangy taste. So are we doing the whole head? Uh, why not? We like kimchi. So yeah, we do. All right, so the ratio for the brine to, to so soak your cabbage is five cups of water. There goes the water. The ratio is five cups of water to one cup of salt or you know, you can change that up if you have a bigger cabbage. Um, we have a massive cabbage today, so I think maybe we're gonna end up having to put slightly more in there. Like, put the water in first, and then you put in like layers of cabbage, and then sprinkle the salt over each layer, so you're soaking every layer in a little bit of salt. You got mittfuls. Yeah. yeah. Two mittfuls of cabbage. No, all of the mittfuls of cabbage, all of them. <laughs> we're gonna use the whole head of cabbage, so. Okay. Throw some cabbage in. All right. Now, when you say fill, yep. How full is filled? Like that's half a cup. We need a full cup, so I need you to fill that thing twice. To the line. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. Now, when you say sprinkle, a third. What? That's probably good. Oh. <laughs> Batch number two. Oh no. No. Four cabbage. I just swept that. Right. And then we also cut up the daikon and we soak that as well so it can get some salty flavor. Nice which tree. is this thing here. You want to show everybody what a daikon is? This. It's, a <laughs> it's just like the, the creature from uh, Spirited Away, right? Uh, yes. Except um, he's much cuter, no I offense. Oh, yeah. And then I usually like to uh, make sort of long little. It's like so. Little bite sized pieces. Yeah, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it. I guess just imagine what sort of shaped chunks you want in your kimchi yeah. and create those sizes of the chunks. Maybe measure your mouth? I'm proud of us for having a firm die pan because we'll often wait until they're all like wibbly and wibbly and then use it anyway. Yeah, but it still tastes good. Yeah. But the crisper, um, the daikon, and both the cabbage too, the, the better the kimchi is going to be, I think. Fresh. You want it to fresh. Be, want it to be crunchy and not uh, wilty and kind of yeah. floppy. Oop. More floor ingredients. Yeah. It's your specialty. Yeah. That's why you should always uh, get a vegetarian dog to uh, rub your floors. Yeah. You know what a vegetarian dog is? A fleety. Aww. Fleety would have loved this cabbage. Maybe not when it's spicy. So we're gonna add some green onion and chop it on up. I like to add the green onion in the, the soaking brine so it can get a little, a little bit salty too. And did you know that if you only cut it to about where that sticker is, right there, that you can do this and you can grow your green onion back? Because this guy over here, I think this is the third time we've regrown it. Conservation is cool. That's about as far as you should cut that. Yeah. Because we have such a big cabbage, we might have to add a little bit more water, but I'll show you how I kind of um, decide that, yeah. So if you look in here, see the water level in this, the cabbage? Actually, I think it might be enough. You can kind of see the water starts to absorb. You want to be able to at least see the water when you squish around your mixture. And we've got a little bit of salt left, so I'm going to add the salt. And then mix it a little bit to make sure everything's like thoroughly coated. Yeah. 
look at how high the water line was. I don't think we have to add anything. It's like right up to the top, so. I mean, it's not like it's submerged, but it, it probably will be. And let it sit for, you know, three to six to eight hours or whatever. It's pretty liquidy though. Drain out all the salty water. Pour in some saucy dew. Some or all? All of it. But you know, you can do it in stages. It doesn't have to be all at once. And ours was a little bit runny, so we did add some daikon to maybe thicken up the sauce a little bit. And you can always taste it and add more garlic or ginger or spice or whatever you feel like it needs. And then you just kind of coat it all. Make sure you show the kind people the inside. Probably doesn't look super appealing, does it? That's just essentially how you make kimchi. You just stir around the sauce and coat all the cabbage. Looks good. And then we're gonna put it in some containers that we have. And it's best to let it sit for like, I'd say like a week or two. Um, to get it kind of fermenting a little bit. Um, but let it sit in your fridge, of course, keep it refrigerated. And it's good for months, like it won't go bad if you keep it in the fridge. So you can uh, eat it over a couple of months and not worry about it. What a romantic sound. We forgot to put these uh, sesame seeds here in, so I think we're gonna try to shake some in there and then shake the container up and hopefully coat. But yeah, add this before you uh, put your kimchi in your containers. So while you're doing that, I wanna ask you about, uh, do you wanna go to Korea? I do, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to go back. Um, I went in the middle of winter when it was like, I think a particularly cold spell because it was like minus 30, lots of snow very frigid but the the food is all very spicy and hot and very uh yeah, very well tuned to the temperature reason enough to go yeah that looks good to me yeah so let's stick the lid on and i think i put enough seeds in there yeah oh, sure put it in the fridge and let it sit for a week or two and we'll devour it it's gonna be delicious eh? <laughs>